It's Friday morning, ladies and gentlemen. That means it's time for another Heads Up podcast with the GOAT and Neil Davis from formpro.co.nz. Neil, very good morning to you. We saw some yeah. Group 1 racing at Hawke's Bay last week. Yeah, brilliant racing, wasn't it? Um, gee, that uh, Tarzino, there's going to be some form to come out of that. And, uh, who would have backed? Also, I'm mad that didn't care of anybody back then. Uh, John Barry, maybe, and Mike Sanders. No, nah, I don't know. I, I don't even know if the owners backed it, actually, to be fair, but well done to them. Uh, you look back now, and easy in hindsight, remember the Hawke's Bay Guineas over the same distance, over the same at the same track. Catalyst beat it by five lengths, and there's about six lengths back to third. So uh, you think now, if Catalyst wasn't there, it won the Hawke's Bay Guineas by six lengths. You go, well, that's good form for a uh, yeah. group one, but yeah. no, uh, got the right run in transit. And Good, gave Jonathan yeah. Riddell his twelfth Group One winner, I think, of his career, oh, and great. no yeah. more deserving than him. Very hard-working rider, and so uh, good to see him get yeah. there. But listeners to the podcast last week, Neil should have cleaned up with your bet of Sapira, which was great value, and flashing home as well. And you'd think the step up to sixteen hundred for the Windsor Park Plate will be right up here, Ali, but you might have to contend with Melody Bell. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I couldn't see a betting Melody Bell, but um, no, it was a good run and uh, ideal for the Liver Mile. But I think she is going to race on the Windsor Park track, but um, no, I think the Liver, the Liver Mile is the ideal race for her, but it's going to be ideal for half a dozen other horses too, so it makes up for a, a really strong... Actually, um, I remember last year when Melody Bell won the Liver Mile, it wasn't that strong a field, was it? So he goes no. forward to the Liver Mile, this is going to be a real good test for us, so... You know, she's Ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm. Some nice uh, performance on the undercard. I thought Miss Aotearoa was yep. very good. And uh, she's a catch. What a debut for her in the El Rocco Sir Colin Meads Trophy. That was impressive. And you like the win of Rum in the last two? They're yeah, just the ride. I thought it was one from Sam Weatherly to get out and lead. And then he backed off at the right time as I was in the sectionals, great section. And um, you could see he backed off exactly the right time and then went again just before the turn, put that winning break on and just to the sunline, just uh, no way they were going to catch it. And um, I tell you what, Sinzento was a terrific run. That was back and wide, improved wide in the open and still stuck on for second, much to the uh, delight of a team of punters um, in the BGB challenge. So uh, go on a group of punters there that um, took out, what, $14,000? Yeah, the team from Love Racing, I think there's five of them, and they each took uh, two races each to select their horses, and they accumulated the most points uh, on Countback. Yep. I think they won based on the higher total yep. tote divvies, but uh, well done to them. I think uh, next week at Hastings, if you want to enter the BGP All-In Challenge, uh Estimated prize pool is going to be up around 35000 so it's going to be a big old go next Saturday as well. Yeah, well, it's, um, I might have a go myself because I don't like the hurdle races on the first day and it was fresh up form the first day. But the second day, we're going to have a bit, bit more uh, form to work with, aren't we? With a lot of horses getting started on the first day, so I might, I might give it a go. Um, and, and people will be back there as well. Now, you were there on, on Saturday. But, um, yeah, it was a bit quiet though, but sort of, uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't, we wouldn't call it the most enjoyable day of racing I've ever attended. It kind of, I said, felt like a bit like a funeral in a way, but hey, we've, that's all behind us now. We are back in level one, if we're not living in Auckland, yeah. and hopefully we are back going to the races on a regular basis and not even to have to wear a mask too, Neil. That will be a positive. Yeah, it is a positive. But, um, actually, good racing at uh, New Plymouth. You'll be there tomorrow. And I think we've got a heavy 10, heavy 11, heavy 10 track at the heavy moment. Heavy 10, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they've copped as much rain as anticipated in the forecast, but still a heavy 10. A uh, few good races there, 10 race card. And the $70,000 feature is race seven on the program, Neil. The NZB Ready to Run Sale Trainers Series race. I guess this is the replacement of the old Muriel Mile at uh, Awapuni. So they cut the distance back to 1,400 and running it at New Plymouth. Oh, right. 
for this one-off uh, year due to COVID, but it's assembled a pretty good field, I have to say, Neil, much stronger than I originally anticipated. And demonetization, the horse that went real good in the Foxbridge plate is the $2.80 favorite. Nigel Tiley, he doesn't travel down to New Plymouth uh, normally without taking home uh, the bulk end of the spoils. And he's got top CD rider Jonathan Parks engaged. Looks the logical one to me. I'm picking that's where your hard earned is going on Saturday as well. Yeah, so you see the two dollar eighty price, and it's probably about right. But as you say, it was a great run last start, and the Foxman Plate behind Avantage, Tabby Mac, and Free to Fur. If any of those are in here, they'd be starting good favourites. So, and I think back up to forty hundred metres on a heavy track is going to be ideal for them. So, two eighty does look. He does look the one, but I know you're quite you know one, and I I don't disagree with you. At all. I just look, looked at this race, and uh, I just thought maybe you've got Lady Cartel can go forward, but lately it's been setting settling midfield. Yeah. Blue on black, more of a stay of resuming, but has got early speed, but that might go forward. But the horse that I think could get a soft time of it, either leading or outside of the leader, is number fourteen, Spring Tide. Very impressive winner last start at Hara. Did it on its ear. Uh, the wet track won't hold any concerns. And this horse just seems to be going from strength to strength, in my opinion, Neil. So, yeah, a bit of value, I thought, uh, in the seventh on the day at New Plymouth Spring Tide. $8 now. I know the owner of Conor O'Kieran has had a decent crack on his own horse there uh, on Saturday. Brought the price in from nines to seven. Confidence very high in the camp, but Tough gig winning, winning four in a row, which is what it's aiming for. Yeah, that, that, exactly right. It's up and well, it's uh, reasonably up in class. It beat um, Gualada at Wanganui last start. And Gualada, even though it was 12th in the um, Arzino on Saturday, it was a good run. So it's not bad form. And it's always a tough task stepping up in class against experienced horses. It'll go forward. But um, I do like your spring tight. And like I mentioned before, earlier on, it, it was travelling really well on the turn at Hara last start and won really well. So, we, like I say, he, he is on the up. So, um, and maybe on the, how that track is playing too. Often it plays on pace. So, sitting second out or even leading, um, that's the place to be. A great each way. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, how the track does play. Yeah. Uh, mm. The rail... I'll tell you, the rail is, I assume, mm -hmm. back in the true. Uh, three metres, which is one metre of, of yeah. yeah, I yeah. think the true's classed as two metres. Yeah. So there's be a bit of uh, fresh ground, wouldn't have raced on since probably February, to be fair. So, um, yeah, interesting yeah. race. Uh, some good fields at Auckland too. Looks like they might get away with a dead track up there. So good days racing in New Zealand. And then, of course, a lot of features over the Tasman. So... I'm sure you'll have a few specials lined up for the subscribers tomorrow afternoon, Neil. Yeah, I'll be getting stuck into the form after this and um, see what I can find. But just going back to that uh, race seven at Taranaki, I'd suggest taking a, what I call an AB trifecta. Take the monetization and spring tide um, for first and second with a field for third. And um, you might get a good price there. So up yeah, quite, maybe. Um, Box up, have spring tide first, uh, field second, demonetization third, the other way around, and maybe a field first, demonetization, spring tide second and third. Yeah. So play yeah. around. If, if they both run a place, then you've got the trifecta no matter what. Yeah. Are the TAB running those $25,000 first balls again this weekend? I haven't heard. I wouldn't they think were, so, but they yeah. Were good last week. Yeah. Don't know. Do you reckon they were? Um, oh, when they jackpot, you know, that gets up to a decent pot then, so then you can have a good crack. Um, I didn't have a go at all, but I think um, if they're on this week, um, like those two horses, if you like those, yeah, sprinkle them around for first, second, and third, and you know, it's, you know, strike something decent. That's catch pots is on. Yeah. No, fair enough. Uh, what else shall we talk about, Neil? Oh, that's right. There was a rugby game last Friday night that was quite enjoyable to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your mates. <laughs> yeah, Tasman. Uh, mm. Gee, they look like they're going to do it on their ear. I think they had the point start covered by about the 47th minute. Yeah, that game. But you're still sweating right to the end. But they did cover that point start. And yeah. more importantly, 
they scored five tries in the second half. Yep. Uh, we've got a few texts about that, so a few punters got on, so well done. Three dollars seventy five for five tries, well found. You had to wait till Saturday morning to get paid out for some strange reason, but uh oh, yeah. TAB made a bit of a boo boo there in their results, but they got there in the end. So that was pleasing. Um we're gonna try something different again this week for a sports bet, Neil. I'll tell you what, can we hold it until we do the brick bats and bow case? Because it ties okay. in nicely with that, and then they can bring it up All then. Right. We'll do that. Yeah, That's off. fine. Okay. What do you want um, to do now? Multi? Yep, the last week's question was... What, oh, what was the horse that ran? Was it 13th from 13th? memory in the Tarzino and then yep. won the Celt? Uh, that was Von Romney at any old price. I think it got so, checked a little bit when a horse fell in the Tarzino or the Mudgeway as it was that year. So it had, had excuses the first two days and Came out and won the uh, Celt on the last day, paying something like $55. And uh, eight people were smart enough to get that right, I believe, Neil. Give me a number, one to eight. Mm, six. Bruce, Bruce R, regular subscriber. He He's won before, hasn't he? Yeah. Yep. So, That's all right. Um, we'll put it on that, that, that bet you're going to suggest in the sports bet later on. It's on... Oh, we'll talk about it later on anyway, so we'll put it yep. on there. Tough to have punting tomorrow, so that'll do us nice. We'll do a very easy question for to win the multi for next week. Uh, race that we didn't talk about at New Plymouth, but it's kind of a bit of a novelty race, I guess you could say. The Road to the Jericho. Uh, this race was named that last year, and the winner got to go to uh, Warrnambool for the Jericho Cup. And we want to know the name of that horse who won last year's Road to Jericho at New Plymouth. It's gone on to be a very handy jumper, shall we say. Yeah, too right. So, uh, yeah, get that into me by, say, Tuesday night, 027-352-6402 or formpro at formpro.co.nz. Right. Um, brickbats and bouquets. Well, you've got one, I think, around just content we're getting into the shall we say the creme de la creme of racing the spring racing both here in new zealand and over the seas and not a lot of uh tv content uh going on neil you're not happy with that no i'm not but um oh with the like on the box seat was i back again back again on tv with uh, greg o'connell and mcgurren and it's i was enjoy watching that because they review all the big races that are been raced and preview the New Zealand Cup and the good horses that are going around, some Australia. It's just, just interesting to watch. And uh, as a punter, mainly of thoroughbreds, and people are watching be mainly thoroughbreds too. It'd be good to have a midweek program similar to that, talking about last week's Tarzino and what's going to happen, the winners of plate, interviews with trainers and riders. It's just something I think we should have and hopefully they can find something in the budget to to do that uh, pretty soon, especially with the spring racing coming up. Fair enough. Yep. I'm sure they'll be listening and taking heed of your advice, Neil. <laughs> He's open. Radio. Um, now, last a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the the um, same game multi betting put on sports bets. And um, something I asked you about it. Have you ever put one on? I've never put one on. But, uh, uh, no, I haven't. But yeah. It might change this week, actually, Neil, because we, we've just been doing a bit of uh, playing around, and I know the TAB have paid $50 million for their new uh, computer system, but that doesn't mean to say you can't find maybe a few little glitches or pricing anomalies, shall we say, there. And your favourite team are playing their last game of the season, the New Zealand Warriors against Manly. Manly have burnt me too many times this season. They, I reckon, have thrown the towel in. The Warriors might get up and win this game, being their last game, the last yeah, hurrah. So the Warriors are paying $2.03 and three head to head. So that's not a bad price. Then also in uh, sports betting, there's an option in league, total combined points. And I think the line is set at 46 and a half over or under. But in the same game multi option, you can choose 47 and a half. Now, the difference between 46 and 47, you're only going to lose if the total score is 47 points. 
that would mean there have to be a drop goal uh, as opposed to 48. So unlikely. So you're not really losing out on anything there. And <clears throat> so normally 203 times $1.87 would give you about $3.79. But if you go to the same game multi, you take the Warriors to win and you take the points as over 47 and a half, yep. they give you $4.60. It's about a 20% uh, boost, shall we say, on that. I don't think they're mutually uh, inclusive events. If the Warriors are going to win, they might win in a low-scoring game right. or a high-scoring game. So I think there's a bit of a pricing anomaly there. So that's going to be the GOAT's best sports bet of the week. A same-game multi-Warriors to win and the total game points to be over 47.5 at $4.60. Does that make sense to you, Neil Davis? It certainly does. In fact, I'm about to put the bet on for Brutes R right now. Um, what you just mentioned... Place bet, done. $92 return for 20 bucks. So good luck, Bruce. Be good. Um, that's on Sunday, is it? Yeah. yeah. Sunday, 5 p.m. So that'll add something to your uh, dinner while you're maybe having an early tea on Sunday night. It'll, I, I reckon we'll get viewer feedback from one person in, Nape, uh, in Nelson. <laughs> yeah, the bride. You'll be saying, you guys have changed your bloody tune. Yeah, well, we've got something to do. Two weeks ago, you were bagging them. <laughs> well, the word is the referees playing for the Warriors this weekend, so they've got a chance. So, 14 there against 13 in the World Cups. Yeah. But, uh, now, um, stump the goat. We've got, I've got some interesting questions here that got a history involved. You may or may not know these. I've been know some of them, but they're quite interesting questions. Maybe I'll a bit probably... around the Melbourne. Huh? I reckon I'll struggle this week, but fire away. I'll take the hot seat and see what you've got for me. Yeah, mainly around the Melbourne Cup it is. So name the first New Zealand bred horse to win the Melbourne Cup. It's a multi-choice. Okay. And the first New Zealand bred horse to win the Melbourne Cup. Farlap, Carbine, Martini, Henry or Kiwi? Well, it's between Carbine and Martini, Henry. Correct. Um, when you said, before you said there's multi-choice, immediately I thought of Carbine, but it, I'm going to change my name, uh, change my answer to Martini Henry, just because I don't think they'd put that in unless it was the answer. Ding ding, correct. Well done, good thinking. Right, oh, here's an easier one. Let's get this one near near which New Zealand town was the Great Far Lap born? Cambridge, Tikawiti, Timaru, or Timbuktu? Yeah, I would have gone. I oh, yeah, Timaru. I guess you'd yeah, go. Watch, watch Dyke Wonder was grey way, wasn't it? So yeah, we'll go Timaru. Yep, definitely. Um, this is an interesting one. How many New Zealand bred horses have won the Melbourne Cup? Zero, 21, 41, 61. Uh, what have we had? 160 years. Hmm. I got this one wrong. I'll only go 21. That's what I went for, too. It's 41. It is 41. Okay. New Zealand bred horse. Must have been a lot. In that 50s and 60s. Yeah. Probably 50s, 60s, 70s. Okay. We got that one wrong. Okay. Which um, Melbourne Cup winner has carried the most weight of victory out of these four Kiwi horses? Carbine, Farlap, Kiwi, Vanderham. Have to be Carbine. Correct. Yeah, it was. Um... Uh, oh yeah. Which Melbourne Cup winner was originally used to round up sheep on the farm? Kiwi. Correct. Yeah, I knew that before they even yeah. Did you know that? I was doing it before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that was um Lupton's, wasn't it? They used to be a sheep farmer. Yeah, we um we did the Wanganui Horse of the Year Awards on Sunday night and I uh, got to um, talk to Brittany, who is Snow's granddaughter, uh, Jamie Lee's sister, who trained Salsa Fay, won the Wellington Cup this year. So reminisced about uh, her father, Warwick, who's Snow's son, I think, uh, on the night of the Melbourne Cup in the Clarendon Hotel. The celebrations got out of hand that he ended up breaking his leg. <laughs> it must so have been half know. drunk, so the pain wouldn't be that bad, hopefully. Yeah, yeah and, I, and then I heard a story that Brittany didn't even know this, actually. Um, Snow Lupton rang through to the Clarendon Hotel that night. Kiwi won the cup, and 
I think from memory, put a thousand dollars on the bar. This is 1983. That in today's dollars is probably ten to fifteen thousand dollars. So no wonder why everyone was drunk uh, at the Clarendon yeah. that night. Yeah, it's one of those races where you remember where you were. Do you remember where yeah. you were when you watched that race? Where were you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was only. I was only. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes up the road from Waverley, so it felt like a, a hometown win. And Form One got home from school, and uh, watched that race. Yeah. Yeah. Still remember it clearly. Yeah, no, I was at um, I was in the fire service in Auckland. Then I was at St Helier's Fire Station, and being around five o'clock, I was about to go off, off work about six o'clock. So I was hoping like hell it wouldn't be a call or something. And um, it was just a great thrill, and the guys yeah. all there sort of had an interest in racing too. So it was great. Um, which New Zealand horse finished second in the Melbourne Cup the year before it won? This is a good one. Was it uh, Martini Henry? Okay. Barlap, yeah. Empire Rose, or Ethereal? Empire Rose. Yeah. I didn't know that. I couldn't remember that. So. Uh, beat she Natsuki. Beat Natsuki. Must have run second to Kenzai, I think. Yeah, I'll Kenzai 187, so it be Kenzai. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. How many New Zealand bred horses have won both the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups in the same year? New Zealand bred horses. One, zero, one, three, or eight. Well, won't be eight. Ethereals. Ethereals. A million dollars. Ethereals New Zealand bred. So that's one. So it's not zero. So it's either one or three. Who wants to uh, be a millionaire? One or three, he says. One or three? You don't want to lock ducks in, do you? Do you really want uh, those in? Can I go 50-50? Uh, will it eliminate one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, we'll, go, we'll go three. Three? No, you won't go three. What would you is want to go one? three for? No, you wouldn't eight. want to go one. Is it eight? Eight, it is eight. Yes, well done. Lock it in, Joey. Yes, well done. A million dollars uh, to you. Eight? Gee, I wouldn't have got that yes. one. No, another one. Oh, I've got three as well, yeah. And the last one, in which year did Kiwi jockey Marie Linden become the first woman to ride in the Melbourne to ride in the Melbourne Cup? Yeah. 51, 67, 87, or 98? 87. Correct. Yeah, Marie Davy is she is now. Oh yeah. Is she mm -hmm. over in Australia, is she or New Zealand? Um, I'll tell you what, I keep getting uh people you may know on Facebook requests. Uh, you know, <laughs> do you wanna so let me see, I'll quickly Check your Facebook program, uh, profile. I haven't tried to add her as a friend or anything, but we might be able to find her here. She's a good he, jockey. Yeah. She was a very good jockey, actually. Uh, Marie Davy. I think she's in New Zealand. Lives in Palmerston North. There you go. Not, not far from you. That's Four mutual friends, David Walsh included. So there you go. Walsh, you will know what she's up to. Yeah. We must get some some ex jockey on from years ago, on one day. Fred Walsh, um, yeah, we'll work on that one. Um, Rightio, so that's it. So you got a one one or two wrong there, but most of them right. So good to reminisce. Not bad. Later. I'll give myself a give myself a B minus. Yeah, no, nah, two right is good. Rightio. Um, so we've got racing crowds back on Saturday at New Plymouth. Good uh, racing, fine weather. Should be the odd chair, maybe, but uh, Ellerslie too, decent track. Um, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Yeah, uh, Ranfurly Shield game on Sunday oh, too. Yeah. That might be enjoyable. Oh, that was right, yeah. a very enjoyable experience watching that game uh, last Saturday. And being a Taranaki boy, very pleased to see the Shield returning home. For how long remains to be seen, but uh, no, nah, good Philip for the whole province and I think for the game of rugby I think yeah. everyone bar those that live in Canterbury would have been pleased with that result so yeah yeah no it's that, those sort of games you love watching don't you the Ranfurly Shield's got history and um, people love watching results like that so hopefully they can hold on on Sunday and keep it going yeah. well everyone have a good weekend of punting we'll have those selections up by 5 p.m. this uh, Friday evening with an update on Saturday morning and cross our fingers we go well on the right button here to stop recording.